Okay, we are live. Stefan Monza, do you hear me? Yes, I hear you. That is perfect. Then, good morning, everyone, and welcome. This is Digital Able Masterclass number six. The session is organized by Avery Dennison in collaboration with Xycon. And if you join us for the first time, we make those webinars to share knowledge and experience around digital label printing. And every time we focus on a specific topic, technology, or a market segment. Today, our topic is printing premium labels with a dry toner digital technology. As a digital printing came into the picture, it became an important technology for the variety of segments, and especially for premium products such as wine, spirits, and craft beer. It helped to fulfill the need for small batches, customized, and limited edition products. Dry toner is one of the commonly used digital printing methods when it comes to printing wine and spirit labels due to its compatibility with standard materials and good print quality. Today, we will see how both Avery Dennis and Xi can look at those market segments, what new materials can be offered for those segments, and then most importantly, we will look at the compatibility of special materials with a toner press. To help us to address those topics, we have invited Monda Van Eyl, a senior product manager, wine and spirits at Avery Dennison, and Stefan Kloptrop, a market segment manager at Xycon. Monda and Stefan, welcome and thank you for joining us. And my name is Vladimir Tulpin, and I will be your moderator for today. Before we begin, some general comments. Uh, first of all, this recording of this webinar and slides will be shared with you after the session. And by the way, if you, uh, if you, if you haven't joined our previous webinars, they're also available on Avery Dennison website, the recording of this webinar. So please uh, feel free to, to go and listen. Then secondly, if you want to ask questions, you need to scroll down and below the presentation screen, uh, you can see the place where you can type your questions. We will answer those questions if they at the end. And thirdly, next to questions, we have polls. We kindly ask you to participate in polls. Uh, there's only one simple multiple choice question and it will take you a couple of seconds to answer that. It would be great as, as more people answer is better statistics we will have and we will look at the results together at the end. With that said, that's all from my side for now. And um, I would like to pass it on to Monda who will kick off this webinar. Monda. Okay, thank you, Vladimir, for this introduction and good morning to all of you. My name is Monda Fennell and I am the product manager for wine and spirits labeling at Avery Dennison. For the next 15 to 20 minutes, I will talk about the key trends in the wine industry and I want to highlight a few of our products in our offering. I will mainly focus on premium materials and premium materials are mainly used for the wine and spirits applications, but they can also be used for other applications uh, like uh, premium food or cosmetics. So let's first start with the key trends in the wine industry. If we are looking in what is happening in the wine market, we can distinguish four key trends. And the first trend is the ongoing trend towards premiumization, which is mainly driven by the millennials. And as a consumer, we are yeah, looking for better quality materials and we are willing to pay a bit more. The second trend is about alternative packaging that uh, uh, in the wine industry, we see that glass bottles are still the preferred packaging format and they account for about 85% of the total packaging volume. But what we see is that there more and more uh, is a shift to other materials, uh, materials like plastic bottles, like back in box containers and cans are becoming more popular. That, uh, um, and uh, it is not only about the different uh, materials for the packaging, but also the different size of packaging. If you look, for example, in innovative uh, packaging solutions, uh, we can uh, mention at the Yacho, they have created a paper bottle uh, for a limited edition of Johnny Walker whiskey. And also uh, recently Accolade uh, announced the, um, the use of flat wine bottles made of 100% polyester. So these are some nice examples of innovative packaging. And with the example of Accolade for 100% recycled plastic bottles, we come to the third uh, yeah, main trend, and that is the trend for sustainability. That is yeah, a ma major trend, and not only in wine and spirits, but uh, uh, overall. And we, 
if we talk about sustainability, we see the sustainability for the product itself. We see that uh, organic wines and natural wines are growing, that uh, the, uh, uh, consumers are more conscious about how uh, wines are being produced. And we see also had the drive for sustainable packaging, which is partly driven by the consumer awareness and partly by legislation. And uh, for example, Diageo and Parna, they have as a target in the 2025 strategy that all the brands need to be plastic free. That, uh, so we see really uh, that, uh, that there is a demand from, from the market for sustainable solutions. The last trend is about new ways to engage the consumer, that uh, um, the, the consumers are looking for an experience, they are looking for personalization, and that means that, uh, that we are looking for how we can use the digital for engagement. So you have the connected packaging. We also see recently, of course, the e-commerce, which is uh, coming up uh, with uh, yeah, the lockdowns, which is happening in the pandemic. Um, so it is really about uh, how to connect the consumer. If we translate those industry trends to labeling materials, we can focus on, uh, on, on the same four, and that we have uh, the premiumization is asking for more premium wine ma materials. Uh, but with the shift to more premium wine materials, then uh, we, it, it also forces the higher-end luxury brands to push the boundaries even further. Because if all the, the packaging and all the products are premium, yeah, everything is premium. So there is also a need for ultra premium materials. Um, sustainability, the health and echo. So there's a need for sustainable materials. Later in the webinar, I will highlight uh, yeah, a few of our sustainable materials and then digital marketing, that uh, how to connect to, uh, to consumers via the labeling, uh, that can be via augmented reality, via NFC. Um, I will not touch base on that today, that, uh, but we have there also some solutions in the portfolio. Before we go into the products, um, I would like to, to highlight what are now the typical label requirements for a wine label. Now, first of all, it is all about shelf appeal. If you are in, in the supermarket, it is more likely that you pick up a wine bottle with a design that stands out, a very beautiful design, and also a very nice paper. Uh, so the quality of the paper has an influence on the consumer behavior. Secondly, good ice bucket performance. If you yeah, drink a bottle of white wine uh, and that is put in the ice bucket, uh, you, you want uh, that, the pay, uh, that the label yeah, looks beautiful, that it doesn't show bubbles, it doesn't show uh, deformation or wrinkles, and also that there is no gray effect. In our portfolio, we do have solutions like the PLUS technology and Aqua Opaque technology uh, for that. A third one, it speaks for itself. For wine labels, there is the high printing quality and uh, the fine, fine details you can get. And uh, also the small order quantities for special materials. Uh, in the wine trends, I discussed about personalization, about uh, ways how to engage uh, consumers. That means uh, that, that we see more trend for limited editions. Now, what does this mean for printing technology? Um, we can say that conventional printing is still dominating the wine and spirit segment, and especially offset and also UV flexo. But digital printing is taking its place in, in the market. Uh, it is becoming more popular. And uh, the reason is uh, that it helps to fulfill the need for small batches, uh, uh, for customized limited editions uh, or premium products. And then dry toner is one of the most commonly used digital technologies uh, as it is compatible with uncoated papers and also due to, uh, to the higher quality. And yeah, as Vladi mentioned earlier, we have done uh, uh, XICOM testing for several of our materials. At the end of the presentation, uh, we will share those results with you.
We talked about that premium Jason is one of the key trends for uh, the wine and spirits market. Um, had that, uh, that the quality of the paper has a yeah, an, an, an big influence uh, on, uh, on the consumer behavior. And if we talk about premium Jason, for us it starts with the shift from wet glue labels to pressure sensitive. And the next step is then coated papers like uh, the matte wine, uh, the high gloss wine. And then to the uncoated papers where you can have uh, very nice, nice textures. And then in the higher end of the range, we have ultra premium materials and the sensorial uh, collection. I will, uh, in the next few slides, I will highlight a few of those uh, materials. Now to start with the black collection. Uh, the black collection is a range of papers with different textures and shades that are dyed in the core. And for all the papers that are dyed in the core, you will have no white coming through the back of the bottle. There are no white edges on, on the label. That, uh, and uh, another benefit is because it is dyed in the core, you also uh, uh, remain at the quality of the finished labels. You will continue to see the texture of the label. And that is what you can see here on, on the picture. Uh, this is a uh, Martelet black. Uh, have I used, can see the, the, the nice uh, embossing on, on the label. Then we have the cotton collection. The cotton collection is a range of uh, papers made of cotton uh, with a content from 5% to 100% cotton. And the cotton materials, they are giving a feel of authenticity, of luxury. Uh, they have a unique texture and a very deep, uh, bulky uh, texture. And this is perfect for getting an exceptional embossing, as you can see here on, uh, on, the, on the image. Uh, it is really like a, a deep uh, embossing. And uh, so you have the natural look of the cotton, uh, very nice uh, structure, very beautiful embossing. Then another range is the sensorial collection. And this is a special range of about 10 different materials. With, and each material has their own personality. That the label that you see here on, uh, on the picture, that is a velvet. Uh, a very soft material, uh, and, and with the velvet, we answer the trend that we have seen in the fashion uh, and also in, uh, in furniture. Uh, in addition to that, we also have other materials like real wood, where, you, where each lab label is unique. You will see the wood grains. Um, fibers look, where you have uh, fibers with a deep texture. Uh, soft tits materials. So these materials are not only like visual, but also they have uh, a, ni a very nice touch and feel and yeah, they engage the consumer via the tactile sensations. Um, I promised before that I would talk also about some sustainable labels and I would like ha to highlight two ranges. The first is the Chris range, which is a very nice example of circular economy. Um, the Chris products are products which are made of 50% organic byproduct, uh, like barley, grape, and citrus. And normally these uh, organic residue, they, uh, they end up in yeah, animal food or even dumped into landfill. And in this way, we, uh, uh, the, the, for example, the grape residue, after pressing the grapes, they are dried and they are then reworked so that they can be used for paper production. And um, the nice thing is that in the paper, uh, you can also see some small particles of the leftovers uh, for, for the natural and the authentic feel. Um, those papers have natural colors that uh, like the crust grape is slightly pink, the barley has a slight brown color and, and the citrus a and, and slight yellow color. Uh, what is especially nice in, in this range is that you have a label made out of grape, but you can use for wine bottle. So it is all about storytelling that the brands can, can use with this range.
Um, then we have a range premium coats recycled, like the premium wine materials. And the nice thing of this range is that it combines the premium look uh, of labels with recycled content. Uh, there are five products in this range, and these are white uncoated papers, very decorative papers, um, with content from 50% to 100%. Uh, the pictures you see on the right side of the presentation, these are the materials with 100% recycled uh, content. Um, the left one, that is the natural blanc, which has a light felt structure, and the right has a deeper embossing, that is the air granite blanc. And then recently, we also introduced three new materials with uh, special embossings. You can see it on the bottom of, uh, of the slide. Um, and these are materials with 50% recycled content. Now, what the nice thing is about this range is that designers can still, ha uh, still have their freedom for creating a very nice uh, design because the papers are white, uh, uh, are white and have the special uh, embossing, they can convey some special uh, uh, storytelling. Uh, and at the other side, it has the sustainable credentials that the brand needs because it had uh, the, the move to more sustainable materials. Um, so these materials, uh, there are yeah, some examples of the materials we have in the wine rates. Um, I, last but not least, I would like to mention the Muse platform. Uh, the Muse platform is an online portal where all the wine and spirits materials are available to see. Uh, in addition, we also show on the Muse uh, future trends, uh, some industry insights. But what is more importantly is that it showcases also beautiful designs from designers and brands who have used uh, our materials for their projects. So yeah, you can really get some inspiration uh, with this. Um, so I really would like to, to encourage you to visit uh, the My Muse uh, website and to get inspired by uh, yeah, the designs uh, that uh, uh, the designers and brands uh, put uh, together. And with that, I want to thank you for listening and I want to hand it over to Vladimir. Thank you, Monda. We worked together in Wine and Spirits for a couple of years. And, uh, you know, since that time, I see it's a lot of things changed, a lot of new products, which I'm really quite, uh, quite impressed how, uh, how quick we're moving in this in this segment. Uh, before we continue, I would like to step back for a minute and remind the audience that if you scroll down below the presentation uh, screen, you can find the place where you can ask your questions. So please don't shy and ask questions. We would like to make it a bit more interactive and, and answer whatever questions you have. Next to that, you have polls. Also, please participate in polls. Uh, it uh, would be nice to see uh, many participants who will have good statistics, and we will also look at the results together at the end. Uh, so what we just learned from uh, the presentation is about the trends in wine and spirits markets and the new materials available for the segments. And in the next part, we'll focus on printing. We'll touch base on trends again, uh, but this time it will come from Xycon Market Intelligence. We'll learn about dry toner printing. And finally, we'll comment on the printability of new products we have just introduced with Xycon Toner Press. Uh, we've just run a few tests specifically for this webinar and we would like to share results with you so stay tuned for that um, uh, and wait until the end of the webinar with that said let's move on please welcome stefan kloptrop from xycon stefan the floor is yours okay thank you vlad i'm very pleased that every Dennison has invited me to join their webinar about labels for the premium wine and spirits using dry toner technology and so let us be honest, talking about a label for such a great product as wine is more exciting than talking about a label for a power drill. So let's first start with some figures in order to have an idea about the size of the wine market. So the worldwide yearly consumption of wines amounts to 292 million hectoliters, which is equivalent with around 12,000 Olympic swimming pools. And so 64% of the wines are produced in Europe, with France, Italy and Spain as the leading countries. 11% is produced in South America and 8% in the United States, where we are talking about uh, the Californian region mainly. Uh, the growth of the worldwide consumption of wine is flat, 
On the other hand, the production of wine is more volatile as the weather can have a big impact on the wine production. Uh, if we look at the wine labeling technologies, these 12,000 Olympic swimming pools of wine are bottled and decorated with 688 million square meters label substrate per year, which is equivalent with around 1 million football fields uh, of label substrates. Um, the self adhesive labels continue to take market share from wet glue labels and had in 2019 a share of uh, almost 80%. Wet glue labels have a market share of 18% and sleeving has a market share of 3%. Uh, wine label face materials are defined as uh, paper or film based. Paper, both coated and uncoated, represented, uh, represents the large, larger portion of wine label face stock with a market share of uh, 88%, while filmic label stock represents uh, 12%. So with labels for the wine and spirit market, there is an interesting paradox between the cost of the label and the importance of the label in the buying decision process. On one hand, if you look at the cost structure of a wine bottle, label represents the smallest part of the cost. Typical label cost range somewhere between one and between one and 2.5% of the final selling cost of the wine bottle. On the other hand, if you look at this shopper, the label will be the key driver which will define if he will buy or will not buy the bottle that he has in his hand. And so why do labels matter so much for wine drinkers in particular? Uh, well, it's because uh, choosing a wine, a bottle of wine is more complex compared to choosing, for example, a juice of a beer. There are so many different types of wines from a Chardonnay to a Merlot to a Pinot Noir with different ages and coming from different places. And so this leaves many consumers bewildered. And for those who are not really wine connoisseurs, it could be really stressful deciding which bottle of wine to bring to a dinner party or picking which wine goes well with a certain dish. And that is why consumers base their buying decision on the label. And so wine labels can convey emotions to a potential buyer and reflect the flavor that's inside. And so the labels serve as a guide to help consumers find the flavor, the quality, and the, the type that they like. So let's now flesh out the printing technologies used for the production of uh, labels for the wine and spirit market. There are for many decades uh, conventional printing technologies available, such like Flexo, Offset, and other press. So, and as I'm sitting here as an ambassador for digital printing, the question is, why should you, as a label converter, invest in digital printing? And if you decide to invest into digital printing, which digital technology should you choose for the premium wine and spirit market? And so, well, the reason why you should invest in digital printing is because there are several major global trends disrupting the packaging market for fast-moving consumer goods, of which the wine and spirit market is one. And with disruptive trends, I'm talking, for example, about the growth of e-commerce, increasing pressure on uh, sustainability, as already earlier mentioned by Monda, by Monda, generations which are changing, where the millenniums are now becoming the major buying force. And just to pick out some of these uh, trends, if you look, for example, at the trend for rapidly changing consumer preferences, we see, for example, a request for an increase in personalization, there is an increase in variety as consumers want to have more choice. There is also a request for authenticity, which will favor, for example, labels printed on uh, right structured papers. And another trend is, for example, the digitalization of packaging. Smart labels can be used as a platform for information, brand messaging, and also to deliver a better consumer journey. And so by scanning QR codes, the consumer can connect to social media and on the other hand, the brand owner can get feedback about the consumer profile, which helps him to understand better his customers. And the result of all these disruptive trends on the label converter is that there is more requests for cost-effective short run, more versions, quicker time to market, and variable data. And so where does Zycon fit in this story? Well, Zycon mission is to be a technology agnostic advisor and technology provider for the label converter. And so Zycon is continuing to build a true, a true digital ecosystem. 
and this ecosystem offers different digital printing technologies, engines for printing, but also embellishment and converting equipment, consumables, workflow software, and a lot of services like support, training, project management, etc. And so it's our mission to supply the label converter with the digital technology that he needs for capitalizing the driving trends in uh, labels and packaging. And as you see here at Zycon, we offer different printing technology, technologies, namely dry toner technology or electrophotography and UV inkjet. So let's now further discuss which of these trends, which of these technologies, uh, namely the dry tone or the inkjet, has the best, best fit with the premium, with the, with the market for the premium wines and spirits. So the two main digital technologies to, today commercial available on the market are electrophotography and inkjet. And as first discussed in a nutshell, the principle of uh, electrophotography. At the heart of electrophotography is a photoconductive drum. And when lighted, the drum becomes a conductor on the lighted places. Where there is no light, it's an isolator. And that is the way how a latent image is created. At Zycon, we use white tone as a marker. The tone is not a liquid, but a very fine powder. And that tone is attracted to places on the drum where there is a conductor, so where there is light. Another important fact is that there is no distance gap between the toner and the drum, which results in a very precise placement of the dots. When we look at the right side of the slide, at the inkjet side, the principle here is that an electronical signal is sent to the ink chamber of the inkjet head, the volume of the ink chamber changes, and ink drops are expelled. The ink drop has then to travel a distance of uh, some, somewhere between 700 and 1000 micron and will be positioned on the, on the substrate. And this is how, for example, dry toner technology looks like when it is implemented into a uh, printing engine. Between the web unwinder and the web rewinder, you see the digital print engine. And this engine has three main parts. At the left, there is the conditioning unit where the substrate uh, is conditioned. This is only needed for paper-based substrates. Not, this is not needed for uh, filmic substrates. In the middle is the printing unit with, uh, for printing in up to five colors. And at the right side of this, en of this engine, you have the fusing unit where the toner is fixed by heat uh, on the substrate. But now let's have a look how the different digital print technologies behave on the substrates. And I will compare here dry toner with liquid toner, with UV inkjet and with water-based inkjet. If you look at paper substrates, um, we see that dry toner, UV inkjet, and water-based uh, inkjet have a good adhesion. For liquid toner, a primer is needed. Concerning the topic of pigment penetration, both dry toner and liquid toner have no pigment penetration into paper substrate, which results in strong colors. With inkjet, both UV and water-based, a primer is needed in order to avoid that a big portion of the pigments are absorbed into the substrate. For synthetic substrates, uh, we see for ink that disease in the same results as for paper. So dry toner, UV inkjet, and water-based inkjet have good adhesion. For liquid toner, a primer is needed. And there is no pigment penetration for any technology as synthetic uh, substrate is not is non-porous. Um, related to the look and feel, uh, the finest resolution can be achieved with dry toner, namely 1200 dpi, as there is almost uh, no dot gain. Dry toner and liquid toner have a certain look, while UV inkjet is glossy and the water-based inkjet offers a matte uh, look. Uh, according to the opacity of the white, the highest opacity can be achieved with UV inkjet. I'm talking about an opacity in the, in the, the range of 93, followed by dry toner with an opacity in the range of 86, and then finally followed by liquid toner and uh, finally water-based inkjet. And to bring that opacity in perspective, the opacity of flexobite is somewhere between, uh, in between dry toner and uh, liquid toner. Uh, related to durability, and I'm talking then about uh, scruff and scratch resistance and heat resistance, here UV inkjet offers the highest durability, followed then by water-based inkjet, and finally, uh, you have then dry toner and liquid toner where an over varnish is advised for uh, 
uh, if, if durability is needed. And related to sustainability, when, uh, which is becoming more and more important, uh, I would position here dry toner in pole position, as there are no solvents or mineral oils involved in this process, and the dry toner is 100% produced with green energy. So, in conclusion, it is a no one size fits all story. It is not about good or bad technologies. All depends on the application that you would like to do with these technologies. But if you have a lot of jobs for the wine and spirit market where you have to print on structured, uncoated paper, my opinion would be to go for the dry toner as she has here the strongest colors without the need uh, for a primer. And so I would like to translate uh, this dry toner technology into an engine in order to make it more tangible. And so some months ago at Zycon, we have introduced the new Zycon CX300 press, which is completing our dry toner uh, family. It's a five color press with a speed up to 30 meters a minute. The press is powered by the 800 digital front and workflow software and can inline be connected with, with embellishments and uh, converting equipment. And about that embellishment and converting equipment that could be also conventional or digital. So I'm not going to explain, I'm not going to explain you during this session all the features of this engine. I think more important is to discuss what is the output that this Icon CX300 press can generate. And this is how and, and this is how the outputs look like. Uh, this is how a premium self adhesive label printed with a Zycon CX300 press on structured paper could look like. And so it's a versatile printing process. You can print on natural structured paper stock without a primer, and you have a wide color gamut without loss of the color strength. It offers also premium image quality. It, is, it offers an offset quality of 1200 on 3600 DPI. Uh, it's five colors where special colors like super black uh, are possible. Only one pass opacity white offers an opacity of uh, 86. Security features like micro text uh, are possible. And it also, uh, it's also, an, uh, this uh, label is also printed with automated uh, color management, which allows you, for example, to match the colors with a uh, flexo label uh, for the longer runs. So it helps you also to capitalizing uh, the disruptive trends in labels and packaging. You can uh, produce, uh, you can uh, print cost-effective short run, versioning, personalization, variable data for connection between the physical world and the virtual world are possible. Uh, and it is also an eco-friendly and food safe system. And so the dry toner is FDA food safe approved. It's even approved for direct contact for non-fatty uh, foods. Uh, it allows you also to have a solvent and even liquid free, free, free production. Um, it's also, there is also due to the digital features less substrate waste and you also eliminate uh, the need for print plates and also the engine is produced with low energy consumption. So it's not only about digital printing but it's about more about digitalization of label manufacturing and it means that this label is produced by using uh, the X800 uh, digital software for having an automated workflow and also uh, Prepress is in a, a high level automated. It offers also a man uh, machine interface, so visual signals will inform the operator, for example, about the status for the press, for example, when he, when he have to renew uh, certain uh, uh, toner bottles. Uh, also, the machine machine interface is available for connecting the press with downstream equipment for converting or embellishment. And it is also cloud connected, which makes it possible for having uh, seven days on seven, 24 hours on 24, having real, real time uh, production data available. So this is my final conclusion. And that is that dry tone is an enabler for the self adhesive labels for the wine and the spirit uh, market. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you, Monza. Thank you very much for your presentation. It was especially interesting to see how both of you looked at the wine market trends from a bit of a different angle. And uh, we are now coming close to the end of our webinar. And as we promised, we would like to share some test results with you. So here we go. Um, but first, let's try to answer the question like about the compatibility of uncoated textured substrates with a dry toner press. What many of us know that the majority of materials work 
uh, majority of materials designed for conventional printing uh, work for a digital toner press without any specific uh, optimization like uh, coating, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But there are new materials coming to the market, and some of them are complicated in their structure. So we picked up several materials from the newly introduced, um, which we expected printing might be challenging, and run some tests on Cycon CX300 engine. So firstly, black materials. As some of you may know, printing on black can be challenging to achieve optimal ink capacity. Some technologies require uh, two layers of ink, especially when it comes to, for example, white uh, uh, color printing. Uh, this is something we didn't observe in the toner press when we printed uh, the paper new black material. Amondo was talking about earlier today. So very good performance um, can be highly recommended uh, for CX300 printing. Secondly, we looked at the materials with recycled content. Uh, recycled pulp uh, may be not as pure as pulp produced from virgin fibers, and it may potentially impact printability. So we tested a few, a few new products from the new R range, recycled range, and one that was just talking about half an hour ago. And we were positively surprised that uh, the presence of recycled fiber does not impact printability whatsoever. So. Uh, you can use the materials from the recycled portfolio and uh, be confident in their performance on the, on, the, on the toner press. And thirdly, we looked at the materials with the deep distinctive structures. And here we have quite some different results. So we tested, on the one hand, we tested uh, the cotton white material. So it's uh, from our uh, famous cotton range and it prints very well. So we don't see any uh, challenges whatsoever. Uh, but if we look at more high and uh, well, high ends and premium materials like from sensorial collection like fibers loop for example then the fibers are really deep and the material is really thick and, and very very structured uh, then the printability on it the, within the toner coverage uh, is not really uniform so the ink anchorage is very good uh, but the toner coverage is not very uh, really uniform it doesn't mean you cannot print on this material um, you can do so but if for example you're looking more for a craft look um, then it's a right combination of technology and the material you can choose but if you are looking for more traditional prints then the choice should go to more traditional papers uh, I hope it helps a little bit the, for the companies who are active in wine and spirits markets and, um, and, and, and want to print digital, uh, this kind of guidance. If you would like to see more details about this test, uh, please contact us. We will be happy to share it with you and pictures, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, before we go to Q&A, um, I would like to share with you one last piece of information. Um, if you are looking what materials are compatible with your printing machine, uh, Avery Dennison has developed uh, a new tool, um, which is already uh, available for several months. If you go to Avery Dennison website, in the right uh, top hand side, you can see the customer tools. You press on that and you need to select digital material finder. If you go there, you, can, you need to just select your printing technology, your printing press, and you will see the list of materials which are compatible with your machine. We constantly qualify and test new materials and filling this database for your convenience. So you can easily find what materials are suitable with your machine and, um, and, and, so, and so on and so forth. Now it's time for Q&A. Let me see what questions do we have. Uh, slides can be shared. Yes, uh, slides will be shared together with recording after the session. Then there was a question on the materials. Uh, have all the materials that you've spoken about are scripted for second toner press? Uh, are the materials available in sm small quantities? Um, answer, uh, so question on the scripted for second toner press, I guess it's more on the, um, on, on, on the uh, side of Stefan, right? Um, yes, as so we're about um, scripting, so a lot of every Dennison materials are tested and are scripted. And that is very interesting for our customer. That means is that we generate and the settings, and when we upload that into the database from our customers, so our customers don't have to find out the right setting for printing, they can automatically do it. In case that uh, that the substrate is not tested, we always do it, and it, that happens quite often. That sometimes uh, customer came up with a substrate from every which is not yet tested, and then we uh, we just then ask every to send us some substrate, and we test and scripted it for the customer. Uh, so normally, uh, the most of them will be in our database if it is not the case 
uh, just reach out to every or to us and we will script it for you. Thank you, Stefan. And there's another part of this question is about the minimum uh, order quantities. And um, Mondo, you answered it already in the in the chat below, but uh, maybe you can talk that through. Uh, about the and about the small order quantities we offer for wine materials. Yes, all, all these materials uh, they uh, are available in small order quantities. They can be ordered via our uh, ready with service. Uh, that means that, that the materials are available on uh, in one roll format. Uh, and typically for wine and spirit, we have that on 250 millimeter by 1000 linear meter and 333 millimeter by 1000 linear meter. Thank you, Monda. The next question is from Christian. It's about the pigment penetration. Can you please explain pigment penetration a bit more? I guess this question is to Stefan. Yeah. Okay. Well, I would say let's do a, let's do an, a test. Uh, so a pigment penet penetration. It's only valid for paper substrates, not for filmic substrates. And as for example, I have here this. Uh, for example, this uh, this paper tissue. And so, what is pigment penetration? is quite easy. If you put a liquid on it, I have now just a little bit water with me. If you put it on it, you will see is that the liquid is absorbed into into your paper substrate. And when you're talking about ink, also a part of your ink pigments, which give the colors, will also be absorbed into the into the tissue, into the paper substrate, and that will resist in that you will lose strength of your colors. And that is, and for example, you have that aspect, as especially with then uh, with an inkjet, where which is a liquid, and so your inks, your pigments are absorbed into the substrate, and you lose color strength. With our dry toner technology, this the dry toner, it's a powder that is not uh, that is not a liquid. So that means, as it is a powder, it is not absorbed into the substrate, and you and you and your pigment. Uh, so you you have a high. Um, you keep your high color strength as the pigments uh, are not absorbed into the paper substrate. I hope that, uh, that was a clear answer for you. Thank you, Stefan. The next question is about the adhesive. So the hot melt adhesive 2047N is extremely challenging for a dry toner. Do you have a solution concerning adhesive bleeding? And the answer from Monda is that we need to use emulsion adhesive, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But uh, would I also understand that the another possibility to solve this challenge is to use ice toner. Stefan, have you do you have experience with the ice toner and hot melt adhesives? Um, no, and I think we uh, but we have to have a look into that question and then come later back after the webinar. Come back. I would like to check that first with my uh, some of my colleagues. Uh, okay. Thank you. Next one is about samples. Can I get samples of new materials that are coming out, uh, especially black collection? Yes, of course, we'll follow up with you directly uh, after this webinar. Uh, next question, which type of varnish desk icon recommends on ice cheetah toner um, when printing on wine materials? Yeah, well, here you have a uh... Well, different uh, different UV varnishes are possible. I would say for the wine and spirits, um, would and more go for than a UV varnish because then uh, you have then an, an, a higher uh, um, a higher scratch resistance compared to, for example, a water based uh, varnish, which is more used when we are really talking about food applications where there is no uh, glass barrier in between. So most of our customers use an uh, UV UV varnish uh, uh, for the wine and spirit market. Thank you, Stefan. And we have a last question. Um, how good, or not not the last one, questions coming up in the meantime, <laughs> which is good. Uh, so then they say next question. How good is the attachment of the toner on the CX300 when, when printing on paper? I guess the question uh, relates to basically uh, the ink anchorage, right? Yes, I think that's that's very good. Uh, so we don't have complaints about that. So that is uh, that is really very good. We we can all, always uh, to send some samples to Mr. Nielsen if we would like just to see it and just to check it. Uh, so that is an uh, that is uh, that is not an issue at uh, at uh, Zycom. Yeah, I, I agree. And also from our side, we when we test material and we qualify them, uh, we do the tape test. Uh, tape test usually done straight after printing, uh, so it's called T0. So it's like in the next uh, couple of minutes after the printing, and also after 24 hours. And we assess how much of the ink is removed from the surface. And usually, uh, we expect to have uh, you know uh, very little ink removal to to qualify the materials. So all the materials we're talking about, uh, they pass, and the anchorage is the anchorage is pretty good. 
Next question. As the fusing temperature of ice toner is lower than the standard toner, it works very well with standard adhesive. I guess it's not the question, it's the comments um, to the question yeah. below. Thank you very much. This is one of my colleagues, one of my colleagues, Okay, great. I could get some additional uh, technical arguments why uh, why toner is such a great fit with uh, for wine and spirit uh, markets. I'd I like to hear that listeners also answer the questions for us. <laughs> it makes our job uh, much easier. Uh, and the next question is, if a material is tested and qualified on Cycon 6.3, would it show the same results on uh, the different press? No, not automatically. Yeah. So yeah. that is the important one, especially on 6.3, yeah. is based on our previous platform. We have, we have now migrated to a new uh, digital platform. It is the, the Diana 2.0 technology. And out of that technology, we have now two presses. Last year, we released the CX, Cycon CX500. And some months ago, some months ago, we released the CX300. Uh, uh, so, and indeed, on the same platform, you can make that assumption. But here we are talking about different platforms. And also, the settings are different. Uh, so, for that reason, uh, when uh, we always for a new engine we requalify the tests as the settings could be a little bit different. Okay, thank you, Stefan. It looks like all questions are answered, and it looks like we had a lot of questions, which is uh, always great. Let's uh, now look at the polls, and to remind you, the question was: In which segment do you see the highest potential for premium labels? And the options were wine, spirits, craft beer, premium non-alcoholic beverages, premium food home and personal care cosmetics and other and not surprisingly the majority of people um, voted for wine 61 percent and uh, the second uh, popular choice is spirits 30 percent less people around seven percent is um, voting for craft beer and while i'm speaking people still, <laughs> still it's feeling changing <laughs> which is actually not surprising on the one hand because obviously these are the segments where these materials are uh, going uh, the most but on the other hand, for example, from our side, and Monza, can, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but we see also the development of premium food and premium non-alcoholic beverages. So it's a lot of this trend of craft is penetrating different market segments in the, in the FMCG. So um, this is something probably uh, uh, will come uh, shortly. Now, we, we already see indeed that premium materials are not only used for wine and spirits, but also, and that is still limited uh, in, in other applications uh, like olive oil, but also premium food and sometimes also cosmetics uh, indeed. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, thank you. I think we are very good with time. Uh, we can give you back 10, uh, 10 minutes of your, uh, of your time. And uh, I would like to thank everybody for, uh, for joining. It was great to see you here and I hope you enjoyed this session. And most importantly, I hope you learned something new from it. Uh, with that said, I would like to, again, thank everybody. Uh, thank, uh, thank you, Monda. Thank you, Stefan, for your presentation, for your input. And I wish you a very great uh, day and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.